back to the Hoops Lounge with a show with more job stability than a coach in Sacramento. My name is Mark Griffin, a.k.a. Montreal Mark. My partner in crime, Phil, by the sporting Phil. We're not talking Kings today, we're talking Knickerbockers. Uh, the team is currently at 5-21, and 21, the worst start in franchise history. And as I said almost a year ago on the Hangout at NBA TV Canada, it's time to blow up the Knicks. What are you thinking? I'm thinking Phil Jackson spending a lar- large portion of his salary on Tums and uh, Alka-Seltzer <laughs> these days. Um, the Knicks are a mess. I mean, it, it's a classic example of, hey, let's go be the Yankees, let's spend a lot of money on big-name players, and let's not put much thought into their integration. They have the big names. They have their Amaris. They have their Carmelo, Shumpert, uh, Paglioni's, uh, Calderon. You know, like, they have nice players. But first of all, none of these guys are really seeming to buy into the system. The triangle. Right? Yeah. And it was funny when, when Rodman's comment came out, how he can minutes. learn 15 minutes. Yeah. There's all these guys who've been around the league for a while. Apparently it's very intrinsic, but Rodman, I don't know. His, his quotes don't always hold value, but... I, I don't think they're buying in or they're not understanding it completely. Yeah, and so it's going to be interesting. And like, statistically, it's not usually good for numbers, especially for role players. Your numbers yeah. tend to sink. So I think a lot of guys are saying, where are my stats? Including stat. It's including stat and mellow. It, it's kind of a whole team that likes stats, right? Yeah. And, and so the question is, do you kind of play the course and you know keep, keep doing this? And t- because there, there is a learning curve with the triangle, right? Mm-hmm. But... How long do you let this play out, right? Mm-hmm. Is this whole season just let's let's make it work or not? Um, because is it going to come to a point where we're like, hey, we're going to give up on this and play a more traditional offense? Mm-hmm. Which I, one do you see? I don't think Phil Jackson, he's a very prideful man, and as is Derek Fisher. I think they're going to try to ride the wave. One of the issues, though, is injuries. And this is something I read about Melo yesterday is that He's in a situation now with his knee where every, apparently every game for the rest of the season is going to be day to day. Doesn't know if he's going to play till game day. So he just signed his five-year extension yeah. and now already he's day to day. Yeah, for the on, rest of the year. On a team that has no foreseeable future. Yeah. And, and Very li- limited draft picks as well. And a lot of guys who are at the tail end of the contracts. It's funny, right? Because we heard this uh, this report coming out that Melo was willing to tri- waive his no-trade clause. And then he came back saying, yeah. no, I'm not. Yeah. And, of course, the bickering that uh, Joe Johnson confirmed that he heard between Tim Hardaway Jr. and Mello during the game. I mean, this happens in basketball, mm-hmm. but it seems to be happening in the locker room behind the scenes and on the court. Well, when you're winning, it's easy to be buddy-buddy, buddy, right? But when you're losing, these little problems fester and they come into the light. And in the media jungle, that is New York City, of course. And, and then uh, Mello was also quoted as saying how he was this close to being in Chicago. Why would you say that? Why would you say that? I know, especially it's like I should have, I might have dated that girl. My life would be better. I don't know. I, I I think he's definitely unhappy. I think it's the sort of thing where he wants. He's kind of like in a Kobe situation where he wants it to be. He wants his home to be fixed. He doesn't want to have to leave. Right. But at the same point, I think there are some moves that like he's not exactly a young pup, right? No, he's thirty scary. right now, and with all the men, with all the injuries you're mentioning, Shumpert, J.R. Smith. Yeah, is this making sense? Actually, um, I heard a comment. Um, I forgot who, who said it. Oh, no, Chauncey Billups said it. Okay. He said that uh, J.R. Smith is hands down the most talented basketball player he's ever seen. That, that, that was a quote by Chauncey Billups. And then he was just like, it's just his head. He can't get his head into the game. It's like kind of a Kyle Lowry kind of figure it out later in life. Exactly. Maybe when you look at, J- when you look at J.R. Smith play, yeah. his ability to, his ball handling, his shooting, his rebound, his athleticism, he has it. When he's on, he's on like... He's one of those heat check guys, but he doesn't do it consistently. Yeah. So I think he's in the wrong city, wrong situation, Jay. A lot of these guys. What are. is the right situation, though? I don't know. Although, although maybe the wrong situation is with Carmelo Anthony. We saw it with Denver. And yeah. then here. I, I could see a, a lot of trades coming up, and I don't want to throw this name out there, but Lance Stevenson grew up in New York City. so Lance can make him dance in the Big Apple. I don't know. That would be interesting because the Bobcats, maybe, maybe a Shumper, maybe Tim Hardaway Jr., maybe both. Yeah. You know, there could be some pieces going back that way. Um, it's so, had to be an interesting Jordan trading someone to the Knicks, right? Yeah, and, and i got to mention a couple of things. Uh, Phil Jackson's never been a, a GM before. Derek Fisher's never been a coach before. And Steve Kerr didn't take this job and went to Golden State. I think he's a he's smart man. Maybe the, the happiest man right now. And, and he said he inherited a good team. I think Derek Fisher inherited a very bad situation. I think Derek Fisher is being put into a position where, as a coach, mm-hmm. he's having stars, but oddly less pressure because they know how bad they can be. That's true. And he's 
being taught by one of the best ever. So I think in five years, we're going to be talking about Derek Fisher as one of the up-and-coming coaches. If he's still in the league, I hope if so. If he's still in the league. Mm-hmm. But I think right now, it's just such a tough position. Like When you're starting as a young player, as we saw with Jason Kidd last year mm-hmm. in Brooklyn, mm-hmm. having all, all that pressure and all those veterans, sometimes not in these situations, going into Milwaukee with all the young guys, yeah. you get to really, you are the veteran, right? Because yeah. Jason Kidd was as old as some of these guys. Same with Derek Fisher. It's true. You get more um, leeway. Exactly. And so I think this is going to be a learning experience, but I do expect there to be wholesale changes. There are some guys coming off the books, Mm -hmm. but I think the Knicks have to blow this up. And I oddly have an inkling that Mello is going to be one of those guys out. I think people are finally coming to the realization, as a lot of people have seen, that Mello, as a great individual player, great stats, great everything, but it doesn't translate to wins. No, and he wants to be go out as a winner. It's a great piece in Sports Illustrated about how he wants to change his legacy. He wants to go into the tech industry, but he wants to be known as not just the fifth best, fourth best player in the NBA. He wants to be known as more than that. I think he needs that ring, and it ain't going to happen in New York. No, and with that contract, it's going to be tough going anywhere. Yeah, so lots of problems in the Big Apple. Uh, Phil, I want to thank you for being on the show. Uh, this week on Hoops Lounge, check out Tech Tuesdays. Mike Grumberg writes a piece every Tuesday where he kind of does a, uh, a <laughs> referee technical foul and stuff going around the basketball world. Really great pieces. And we got stuff, all kinds of stuff, podcasts, videos, contests, writing, everything every week on HoopsLounge.com. Uh, Phil, like I said, I want to thank you again for being on the show. And check us. Our show is every Monday now. Uh, and send us stuff. Go on the website. Contact us. Send us emails. Tweets. Use hashtag Hoops Lounge and talk to us anytime because we love talking basketball. Uh, so uh, thank you again for being listening to the show and see you soon and in the lounge.